Your Majesty, the Queen of this observation colony, your retinue of ladies-in-waiting, your cavity cabinets of egg, lava and pupa, and lurking in the far corridors of your court, the gentlemen-in-waiting, the drones. But above all, I address you, the mass of workers, all weightlessly female, the young insiders, housemaids, nannies, honey girls, bouncers, builders, wing dislocating ventilators, and the outside, flyers, old Valkyrie foragers and scouts, who will one day go missing in action, unmourned. One bee is no bee. I bow to the hive, to your admirable colony. I send you the foreign language of my fascination and respect, and am in turn bewitched. Please pause while I address you, a workers' education lecture. Let silence fall throughout this modernist high-rise, so different from everyday dark hives, illuminated only by landing lights. Here, in a spirit of glazed transparency, you forego privacy to display yourselves for inspection and reflection. I take this to be a sign of openness, a cooperation. Beekeepers once spoke to their bees of human affairs, even bringing food from harvest suppers, even draping hives in black cloth after a death. In this spirit of inclusion, I come to revive this lost custom of telling the bees telling you of how things go in human colonies, their experiments in organising themselves. Although this may be new to you, you will already have felt their impact. Rest assured, I am not a robber bee drifted from next door, or a carrier of mites, bee lice, fungus or virus. I bring no childhood disease to foul your brood. Today I do not bring poison spray. I'm not a snake-tongued woodpecker or your ancestor, the wasp, that can sting again and again, defying death. I'm not the hive-wrecker Asian hornet, nor a wax moth. Neither am I a ghost, like the death's head hawk moth, that can mimic your pinhead queen's contralto lullaby while it spirits away your sweetness. Neither am I pacifying you with holy incense, nor tanging metal to call you out. Attend to me with your low-slung antennae revolving like radars, with your listening body bristles, with your magnetic crystals, with every one of your several brains, with your compound eyes, with your fascinator forehead eyes, with your broad-spectrum light vision, with your paranormal electric fields. Listen to what I tell you, even if you are completely deaf. You will be told. You will take a telling. O oh Queen, walking ovary, mother of all, your writhing larvae bathe in bee milk from the warbling heads of wet nurse workers who tell them to lie down and keep still until they are dry, dried into cocoons with changing traffic light eyes, until full-grown workers pipe from those hexagon cells. Or sometimes you bear drones, all eyes and male gaze, all eyes making eyes at you, who while away their time in a locker room with pouting queen pinups, until their big day arrives, an aerial mating chase after a new queen, their destiny of orgasmic suicide. O oh queen, sniffing the skirting for any new queen, always looking for an emerging rival, a younger model to be traded in for, as your sexual magnetism fades, no longer the fairest queen of all. You hunt down the upstart and sting her to death. You sweep through your Pyrenees labyrinth, huddled by fawning attendants. All others pause in obeisance. A bee, a bee, another bee. You drag your bloated belly over a bridge made of straining bee backs, then leave a trail of pearly eggs to guide you back in the night. Meanwhile, the workers' font-like bodies spell instructions in looping dance. Exoskeleton wings twist 200 times each second. 
and there is always encouragement, chemical cheerleading, exchange of fluid kisses. No humans sizing up each other, nursing tiny distinctions to build an ego of wax. Bathed in blood heat, you clamber over your sisters like a washing machine load, like puppies in a basket, like cells. No self-definition needed here, no personal space, no me time, no individuality applies. Everything is plural and public. You willingly sacrifice for others, your agency delegated to the common good. Generous, modest, industrious, efficient. So virtuous as to be sanctified by the Virgin Queen of Heaven, once discovered sitting inside a hive. But you steal from other colonies and are merciless in combat, easily roused to an immersive swarming mob, excluded from the Ark because corrupt, you could only be redeemed through hard work and altruism. The swarming sugar carcass of the Tate, out of the strong came sweetness, transcendent bee. Over a million bee lifetimes, we have seen you as mythic and exemplary, and appropriated you for our kaleidoscopic succession of ideologies. In our enlightenment, bees became rational. When we were romanticist, bees became slaves of industry. With the arrival of the Langstroth filing cabinet hive, it became a Fordist factory. After our latest world war, bees became communists, totalitarian threats to democracy, then mindless killer bees to the me generation. The colony is organism with an immune system of secret police. Now you herald environmental apocalypse. The failure at first of wild bees in the new word of monoculture chemicals and now even farm bees are disappearing. Don't leave us. Who will cross-pollinate the fruits of the earth? We can't be diverse by ourselves. Bee metaphors can be worked to death, as you work unto death, as we work unto death. Maybe you evolved as all process, jettisoning consciousness for action. All collective, your differences are of intensity rather than identity. So we misread hive life as incessant, but outside workers retire in the sunless night when the flowers shot. Even in the day you sometimes rest in isometric postures or you walk about in no fixed pattern, exchanging food mouth to mouth. Without a neat division of labour or distinction of work from leisure, a trembling dance to request grooming or a mysterious nudging others dance, perhaps conversing by smell for a reason that is yours alone, for no reason that should concern us that belongs outside our experience, but is central to yours. And you take cleansing flights to shit outside. Young hive workers are sent outside to play on nice afternoons, interweaving the forager's dead straight bee lines with ever-increasing circles. The drones buzz deeper, fly higher. What is child's play if not learning? The learners fly round and round like a round dance for orientation training, by the sun, by landmark. Sheer exuberance in action, youngsters cluster in the shopping mall entrance, grooming and tapping antennae. The entrance board lined by guiding plumes of pheromone. What is freedom if you can fly? But do your days leave enough time to consider all we do for you? Giant keepers in white mesh helmets who leave you sugar syrup like trader beads and drain your combs, who drink your summer, who defend the economics of surplus honey, who say your hives are bastions of full employment with free raw materials, that your only expenditure is sunlit energy. All overheads are met, tide accommodation with food supplements, free health care, in the best blossom locations with fine views, even love and understanding. Who say we only want some honey, a honey tax if you will, we don't even any longer need to kill you for it. And some smaller print items, B 
beeswax, royal jelly and sometimes to rent you out to pollinate faraway fruit. Who say it so clearly in your interest as to be beyond question, a fair exchange no matter what the vegans say. In any case, could you do any other than service humans? Are you too domesticated to rise up at the risk of losing what you have? Could you organise all your rival colonies with mobile phones, occupy and barricade the streets, public squares and buildings? Could you demonstrate, make speeches to mass meetings, write slogans, take control of the media, win over the army, unleash masonry be iconoclasm, free the prisoners, parade enemy heads on your barbed stings, arrest the fleeing leaders at the border, hit a toppled bronze with your shoe? Could you hold free elections, deal with counter-revolution, fight house to house, hand to hand, in equal combat like fighting twins, cling on to each other like grim death for dear life? Could you shed your colourless blood as we have done with all our knowledge over and over and over? What you do have at your disposal, however, is your willingness to swarm, the power to withdraw your labour from the hive to find a better place, with or without your queen. In protest of overcrowding or other adverse conditions, but this is a one hive action, it is not a mass mobilisation. Closer to a general strike, that road to revolution is colony collapse. Workers abruptly disappear from the hive, leaving honey and pollen and an abandoned queen, helpless among her starving brood. But even this is not a revolution, rather a rebellion. The system is unchanged. We should therefore examine how your domestic politics are shaped first, how the different honeybee castes are organised and gendered. Your Majesty the Queen, are you ruler or servant? Your behaviours are few, a day of mating, then house arrest, unless the swarm, laying egg after egg. Until you mate, your maids angrily push you, impatient for it all to start, and after are they still not brisk and rough, as though tending any interchangeable egg machine? Would it not be a relief to abdicate? And who decides to swarm, when to uproot the colony and abandon the hive, to move away from the familiar walls in sudden trajectories, to a branch, to an artist's head? Does the queen decide to swarm, or do the workers decide it's time to depose her, because she is old and failing in queen substance, in a world where the main agent of control is pheromone? Do new queen cells appear in corners of the hive, is she suffocated by a mob of her attendants, or do eugenic humans come to de-queen a colony of aggressive or lazy bees? And is the presence of a queen so indispensable? Could she not be decapitalized to a lower case? A queenless colony does not have to feed a brood, so can live a whole summer, becoming as fat as clustering winter bees, but rarely surviving that long. Some species of bee are communal, several queens sharing one nest, and the workers can, at a pinch, lay eggs. In a republic of bees, why should the workload fall to females, whose life is short? After all, the unsting male drones will join in cooling and heating hive work if they must. And should they only exist as sex objects, only tolerated during the summer mating, and if they survive that, being banished from the colony to save resources. There could be a new great social metamorphosis, a new dawn, a new system. Honeybees will again seep into trees, caves, invade and occupy the attics and cellars of humans. No distinction of bees by gender or caste. The queen is dead, long live the colony, now everybody can have all the automatic happiness of a royal family. 
a new world where humans did not want your honey, but rather your communal energy, the pleasure in gathering together, that affect of camaraderie in a shared task, of believed propaganda, the euphoria of belonging, of sharing aims and concerns, the buzz of sheer mass excitement. <laughs>